Welcome to Technology Paul. Today, I'm gonna to tell you all about my Google Smart Home. Maybe you already have Google Tech in your house. Well, I can perhaps give you some ideas on how to set things up to work better for you or additional smart home products you can get. Or maybe you're wanting to get your smart home set up and you're wondering what ecosystem to go with. See, there are three major ecosystems, Apple, Amazon, and Google. I haven't taken a serious look at Apple's ecosystem because it's the most expensive to get into. But you can set up HomePods and HomePod minis around your house. You can use the Home app built into your iPhone and you can use Siri as your voice assistant for automation. I've dabbled a bit in the Amazon world though. One notable review I did about a year ago was the Echo Show 15, a giant smart display from Amazon. You can buy smart displays and speakers and use Alexa as your smart assistant. But I've ended up moving mostly towards the Google ecosystem over time. I find that you do have to make a choice about which ecosystem you want to go with first. Trying to use devices or services from all three of these companies for smart home purposes can cause a pretty disjointed experience and your home won't be that smart after all. Now I say I mostly went with Google because the reality is it's still hard to control everything from one service. For example, in my house, I have TELUS Smart Home Security. I've done another video on that, which you should check out if you're interested. I won't be spending any time on it in this video, but essentially it provides me with professional security monitoring enhanced by modern day smart home features. For example, I can use the app to lock my front door, open or close my garage door, view the security camera over the garage, as well as arm or disarm the system. I could have done some of these things through Google, but I also wanted to make sure I had the professional monitoring part of the security system. I also have a couple of Wise cameras around the house, which obviously aren't Google's Nest cameras. Honestly, Wise cams are just way cheaper, which is why I went with them in my garage as well as for my backyard. But beyond that, I'm all in on Google. So let's take a look, shall we? Let's start outside the house. I have a Nest doorbell at my front door. This is technically the older generation. The new ones look a bit sleeker, but you get a live video feed when someone rings the doorbell. It will send a notification to your phone and you can view it right through the Nest app. It's got two-way audio as well, meaning you can talk to whoever's at the door. That's useful if you're not home and a friend or family member comes by. With the optional Nest Aware service, you can get different types of alerts. For example, you have face detection, meaning it will tell you who is at the front door if you have your contacts named in the app, or it will tell you if a package was delivered or if a pet or animal is outside. You can set up detection zones so you don't get random alerts for someone walking by your house. As I mentioned, you can get Nest Aware and there are two versions. Nest Aware costs $8 a month and will give you 30 days of event video history, or you can opt for Nest Aware Plus, which is $16 a month, but gives you 60 days of continuous video history, as well as the advanced detection features I mentioned before. This one subscription covers all Nest cameras you have, it's not just for the doorbell. I'd say it's likely worth it because the camera is fairly limited without the service. On the main floor, we've got a Nest Hub Max in our kitchen. I love this thing and use it every day. A lot of people have a smart speaker in the kitchen because they use it to set timers, and we definitely do that too. But having a smart display allows you to do a lot more. I made a video about this a while back, so you should definitely check that out if you want an in-depth review. But there are a few reasons I like having this here. First of all, the Nest Hub Max has a camera on it. This this serves two main purposes. On the one hand, you can do video calls on it through Google Meet or Duo or whatever the service is called today. That's nice, but not something I use very often. It does serve as an additional Nest camera though, so when you're not home, you can check on your house. You can even set up person or motion detection just like you can with the doorbell cam. If you want to skip using the keyword to get its attention, you can set up look to talk, which means if you look right at it, it will be listening for your prompt without saying, hey G. The Max also gives you a pretty big screen at 10 inches. This thing is awesome for entertainment purposes. And yeah, while I'm cooking, I like to throw something on Netflix or YouTube. It's a great way to catch up on your show while getting your chores done. If someone comes in and rings the Nest doorbell, well, it pops up the preview right there and allows for two-way voice communication just like you can do from your phone. Plus, when dinner is ready, you can use the broadcast feature to call everyone to the table. Broadcast will send your voice message to every display and speaker in the house and is incredibly useful. If you look over by the stairs, I've got the Nest Learning Thermostat. 
that. There are two versions you can buy on the Google Store, the learning model and the regular one. And let me just say right now, I should have gotten the regular model, which is cheaper. I don't use the learning features at all. It's supposed to be intelligently paying attention to your schedule, your coming and going, and designing a temperature schedule automatically. I never got good results with that, so I just locked it into a schedule the same as most other thermostats can do. The nice thing about the Nest thermostat is that you can adjust it from the Nest app or any display or speaker around the house. Above that, we have a Nest smoke and CO monitor and alarm. We have one on the main floor and I just put one in the basement. Our old smoke detector downstairs stopped working so the time was right to switch it out. It's pretty easy to install and set up. I have another old school smoke detector upstairs which I'm looking to swap out soon too. There's nothing too crazy about these other than they do smoke and carbon monoxide detection in one unit. Plus, it has a night light on it. If you're walking around at night, it will light the way. It runs a monthly test too and even does audio tests so you know it's still working. From the Nest app, you can see that it's detecting everything to be normal. Then I've got a slew of other Google Assistant speakers around the house. Upstairs in our bonus room, we have a Nest Mini, as well as in our son's bedroom, and in the master bedroom, we have a Nest Hub display. Not the Max, just the smaller one. In the bedrooms, we use Hue lights, which of course link up with Google, so you can say, hey, gee, turn off the lights. Could I get out of bed and turn the lights off? Yeah. Do I want to? No. In the basement office, we've got another Nest Mini. So as you can see, we have them in most places around the house. I think that's kind of key if you want to use your voice as your interface with your smart home. Think about how you want to interact with your system. Do you want to grab your phone every time you want it to do something? Probably not. These Nest Minis are relatively cheap, so it's not too bad to pick up a bunch of them. In fact, we're not quite done because I also have Nest Wi-Fi. Not only do these Wi-Fi points pump out pretty good mesh Wi-Fi, but they also serve as a Google Assistant. So I've got this thing in our workout room, which is technically a spare bedroom that's been somewhat converted. I did a video on Nest Wi-Fi as well, if you want to learn more about it. And all this is brought together by the Google Home app. Not only do all the Google products plug into the app, but most third-party systems integrate as well. Which allows you to use Google to control your lights, locks, irrigation systems, or anything else you can think of. As long as you're buying products that have the works with Google Home certification, you should be able to make it work. From the Home app, you can use quick actions to control your lights around the house. If you have music or media playing anywhere, you can control that too. You can also get the music to play on multiple speakers around the house for a full home audio experience. This is no Sonos, but it's still pretty cool. I can control my thermostat from here or even view the Nest cameras. And then you can also also browse by room to view all the devices in each area. Things like lights, TVs, displays, speakers, and everything else. One of the great features of the app is routines. You can set up custom routines that string together different automation. So for example, I have a bedtime routine. If I say good night, you can see the actions here are to turn off a bunch of lights, set the speaker's volume to a lower volume, and play sleep sounds. I've got another routine for good morning where the display will adjust the volume and tell me a bunch of things like the weather, my calendar for the day, and reminders as well as give me the top stories from the news. So you can see Google's got a pretty good smart home system and again you have to go all in on the ecosystem. You can't really have a mix of Google, Amazon and Apple speakers that don't work very well together. Well you could but then it ends up being a huge hassle because you're having to work within three smart home apps connecting all your various devices to multiple ecosystems. As much as you may know I'm an Apple fan I think Google's smart home system is a bit more accessible overall and honestly it works well. I haven't really had too many issues since I started building my Google Smart Home. But what do you think? Have you started building your smart home? What ecosystem did you choose? Technically, there are more options outside of the three big companies, but it gets more complicated at that point. So how does your smart home work? Hopefully you got a couple of ideas throughout the video and found it useful. If so, do me a favor and leave a like on the video. That helps me out a lot since it will recommend the video to others who are interested in smart homes or Google's ecosystem. If you like tech and smart home stuff, consider subscribing to my channel. I discuss all kinds of tech, but I often discuss smart home tech, as well as smartphones and all the apps and services that are out there. You can also follow me on Twitter at technology underscore Paul. And then if you want even more, you should sign up for my monthly newsletter the Digital Dispatch with Technology Paul. It's a monthly recap that shares some of my best videos with you, as well as some of my latest blog posts, and even gives you a preview of what's coming up on my channel. Plus, I like to curate other tech news that I find interesting, but don't get a chance to discuss on the channel. And there's one more great benefit. My newsletter subscribers get access to exclusive content. 
I've already shared a private spreadsheet with all the available cellular plans in Canada in one place. A resource I keep up to date so folks always know what's going on in the market for pricing. And I've got more exciting stuff on the way exclusively for newsletter subscribers. To sign up for that, just follow the link in the description. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.